Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I want to talk to you about how, uh, when I used to be a uh, professional motorsports photographer, how I got into it, why I got into it, why I got out of it, the, hard, the hardships, the gear I had, uh, my learning process, a lot of hard work. Um, so yeah, back in uh, 2007 I think it was, uh, we had uh, the Kings of Wanneroo. So I, I have just left, I left school the year before in 2006 and um and then in 2007 i had a motorbike and um yeah i was you know interested in bikes but I, I was quite shy and i was quite quiet and i didn't really like socializing with other people i kept to myself so I, we went up i went up to Baba Gala raceway with my mum um and watched the kings of wanneroo so we had guy martin and uh, jeremy mcwilliams and a load of international riders come to Barbara Gallo Raceway and it was a great atmosphere but um, it wasn't for me at, at that time but I did enjoy it and I remember taking uh, my Fuji Finepix S5600 with me now this has got a 10 times zoom 5.1 megapixels very basic uh, very um, very old technology this was I got this camera um, when I was still doing my photography um, because I've been doing photography since the age of nine, sorry. And when I used to go on family holidays and I used to get the photos and I was doing like wildlife and nature and uh, anything that basically caught my attention, a little bit of astro as well. Um, but yeah, this was my first sort of like digital, uh, like digital SLR sort of thing, but it's not an SLR, it's all fixed lens. No longer works, but I keep it because I enjoy it and it reminds me of where I started. So, um, yeah, I went and took this up to Belva Garilla Raceway on that day, and um, I didn't think I'd, you know, like it or anything. But I sort of got into the mood of it, I was getting, the adrenaline was going, and I was getting really excited by it. Uh, but my photos, when I saw them back on the computer that day, because I, I had no idea about ISO, shutter speed, aperture, uh, focal length, so how important everything was. I was just basically shooting an auto and I remember getting those images back on the computer uh, when I got home and uh, just seeing little black blobs. So that's when I realised I needed something more than this. They gave me more range and more control over my camera, uh, like focus mode and stuff. So that's when I, uh, in 2000 and late 2008, I purchased myself a Canon 1000D uh, with a t uh, twin lens combo, so I can't remember the lenses. I think it might be an 18 to 55 or something like that, um, and maybe a 75 to 300. It was really basic, really cheap and nasty rubbish lenses. Um, uh, but the kit lenses today in cameras um, with your entry level gear is really good, and I've been actually blown away. And I've sold stuff uh, taken with that uh, when I done a bit of motorsport um, not too long ago. So they are still quite capable. And uh, yeah, so I got that and I remember in the camera shop when I bought the, the, the setup with a camera bag, cleaning stuff and you know, a couple of a spare battery, memory card. And um, yeah, I remember sweating. I was going, oh, I'm spending all this money because I didn't have much money back then. Um, and I didn't know how much money, you know, how much, how much was a lot of money on camera gear. Uh, but I remember seeing all these big white lenses on display behind the counter. I was going, wow, the people that use that, oh, they must be incredible, they must be you know, professional photographers, and I'd never use anything like that. And I remember seeing the price tags like $8,000, $10,000, and I was just going, I was just in awe of that stuff. Um, and here's me buying, um, I'm sweating over buying this little kit. Um, it was sort of an investment for me as well, um, but I wasn't sure what it, what it was gonna do, because I didn't want to, you know, waste my money. And I remember on this day, and it will stick with me for the rest until I die, the price that I paid was $974. Um, yeah, I can't forget that number in it. So the, the first real number when, um, and that was basically the start of it for me, and I never realized where it would actually take me and where I am today as well and what I've done uh, over these years. Once I got that camera, I started heading back to the track and I was taking more and more photos, getting more and more creative. I was shooting from the fence lines, I was shooting tra track days, ride days, um, uh, race rounds, uh, tuning days, practice days. Um, I was getting up to the track every single weekend 
um, and taking anywhere from four to five thousand photos, sometimes five six thousand photos every day from a camera that only shoots three frames a second. That's a lot. I used to shoot cars, I used to shoot bikes, um, anything really, just to build up my experience and knowledge and understanding so I'd learn each time and I would still shoot in auto modes. I, I think I shot an auto to begin with and then I went to like a, when I started knowing a bit more I put the camera into shutter value and then aperture priority and sometimes P for program and then I, I tried manual once but that scared, out, that scared me because I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know how to adjust my settings or what to adjust. Uh, so I just use the auto sort of mode where I can control the one of the uh, camera settings. But it, you know I've done that for a number of years, and then I started shooting manual. But um, yeah, I use this this kit kit stuff, and then I realised I need more brain, more focal length, and a better image quality. So what I done is I went on uh, the local classifieds and I picked myself up a Sigma one fifty to one fifty to five hundred the old glass so it wasn't that fast to focus it wasn't that good an image quality but it allowed me more flexibility and more range and I could do more with my gear um, and then I acquired the 450D as a second body so I could have the wide angle lens I had um, you know the 50, 1855 and then I could have the 7D with I mean the the 1000D with the uh, bigger lens so I could get wider and then I could do the long lens uh, for those telephoto shots um, and then so I was going out there and just taking some photos from the sidelines and I was doing it for free and then I got this uh, um, this message from a photographer on a forum that I was on and he said I need to be charging I, I can't be going out there and you know charging nothing and just put giving photos away um, so that was a bit of a, an eye-opener um, because he said I was affecting his business so um, that's when I created a website. I think I used Smug Mug back then, and my goodness, that was a learning experience in in it on itself. I I had no idea how to create a website. I had no idea about domains and copyright and selling and everything. So that was a another thing to learn. So I taught it. I taught. I learned by mistakes. I, there were times I made sales and um, I didn't actually earn anything from it because I didn't have the settings right. Um, and then I also forgot to remove the download, so people were downloading the original files off the website. Um, I, I, if you think of any mistake, I've, I've, I've definitely done it. Uh, there were times I went up to the track and I forgot the memory card, so it was about an hour's drive from my place on the computer because I only had like two memory cards with me. Um, and oh, I think it was actually one memory card. Um, but I never had a, I never had a card failure, but I used to. Uh, just format every single time um, and I think that was a good thing to do getting into the site sales and, and earning just a little bit of pocket money to cover my food and my fuel to get to the tracks and nothing to cover gear but then I knew I wanted and then I was wanting to get more gear so what I'd done in 2010 I picked up myself a 7D Mark, oh, the 7D Mark 1 so the original and I think I think I was still using the same glass I think I purchased myself a 24 to 105 lens, um, so I had a bit better uh, quality glass over that 18 to 55 lens, whatever it was. Uh, so that was nice. I uh, started doing some photo shoots as well, uh, some bike shoots. Uh, just have a bit of fun, you know, meetups, and give away the photos for free. Uh, just to just have a play and and uh, meet up with other people. Uh, then I, I was just getting more and more into it. I was taking thousands. I was with the 7D, it um, allowed me to take many more photos. I was taking like 8,000 photos a day. It was absolutely insane. So and the, a bike would pass and I'd be, you know, uh, motor drive the whole way through. That bike goes through and I've probably taken about eight frames or something. Um, and you, you just, you, there were other photographers who were doing the exact same thing and it, it just drives you on. Um, but la later on that night, you know, when you get home and you're sitting in front of the screen, you're going delete, 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 delete. Oh, that's not too bad. Delete, 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 delete. And you might delete 60 or 80 photos in a go. And um, yeah, my success rate when it came to panning, you know, I was shooting like, a, I think a 160th, 1 160th of a second. And my success rate back then was maybe 1 in 80. And then I wanted to um, a better quality uh, telephoto lens 
So I went to the bank of mum and uh, got a little loan out of eight and a half thousand dollars. It's just insane. I'd never do that again. Um, I would buy used. I was just buying new. So I got myself the Canon uh, EF 300mm uh, 2.8 LIS2 USM lens with a two time extender. Golly, that was expensive. Um, um, it worked for me for a while. Um, I earned a little bit of money with it, uh, but I never paid it off. And uh, about six months in, I regrettably sold it. I don't know why I sold it, you know. Um, and then I bought myself a 5D Mark III and a Canon uh, 70 to 200 2.8 LIS2. Um, and I, oh yeah, that's right, because I changed. I was getting sort of a bit bored of the racetrack. And then I was sort of interested in the um, motocross, so I, I went up to the track and started taking motocross photos. And um, yeah, I thought, you know, oh, this might be somewhere else I could, you know, expand into, and I could sell photos, as, and uh, people would buy them. I went up there a few times, and no one sold them, and I was just like gutted. I was trying to think of how can I change, how can I learn, how can I improve, and. Um, but I did get up there, I did have like a set of speed light and had them going through and done some, uh, doing panning and mixing with light, off camera lighting, so I was getting more creative there and I got these really cool shots. Then I was just doing like more track days, just going up there and just shooting for members of the public come bring their bikes down to the track and ride around and um, then I'm there taking the photos. So I linked up with uh, another photographer called Sterling and um, he was sort of a bit of a guidance as well at, back then. And um, so I used to shoot out there. Um, so that started in, I think 2011, I was doing that up until uh, 2014. Um, or uh, mid-2014 because I went back to England. Yeah, so I was making sales through that and we'd have a, you'd have about 100 bikes, um, four different groups, and I would shoot in, in rain, uh, in summer, so incredible heat. I remember my 70 being so hot to touch, I'd have to put a bit of water over it or it'd get overheating warnings. Um, you'd, be, you'd be right next to the track and you could just feel every... It was just... It was insane. It was probably 70, 80 degrees in the sun on a 42 degree day. But I was out there. I had my hat on or a long sleeve shirt on. I uh, had a cowl pack on as well so I could keep hydrated. But it was insane, insane weather. And um, yeah, so I was up there every single, I think, every single weekend as well, still taking photos. And um, I was I noticed I was improving. I was getting more creative with my photography as well. I would get down low. I uh, started having a, a remote remote camera photography as well. So I was trying to get more creative and doing more panning, getting low, showing things, and playing with angles, compositions, and and um, yeah, really getting more creative. Uh, trying to uh, capture the rider um, in that moment. Got a call one day when I was out that um, my mum wanted to move back to England, so I was still living with mum. Well, I went back to England and uh, done some motorsports photography over there, so I shot for Paddock 42, uh, right, uh, which is no longer around anymore, sadly, um, and uh, race reviews, and I had stuff uh, that was published in uh, magazines as well, um, and uh, that was quite nice, so it got me out there even further. Um, it was it was so hard. I had to accrue more gear, so I bought stuff second hand. I bought myself a one D uh, Mark III. Um, so I had my five D three one D Mark III. I bought a three hundred uh, two point eight LIS uh, second hand. Um, I got a one point seven a one point four time extender. So I had my two time and my one point four. Um, and I got all this uh, from um, MPB in England and. They were awesome, they were awesome to deal with, and back then they had like 4,000 followers on Instagram and their, little, their store in Brighton, they didn't have any other stores as well, but now they're, that's amazing what they're doing. So yeah, I, um, I, recruit, I had gear in there, and I've got a, I've got a low pro bag up there, uh, just behind me, a low pro pro trekker 400 I think it is, and um, so I was really lugging up my bag with that, and having a load of gear, I was taking my laptop up. Uh, to the racetracks. I was going all around England. I went to um, oh, somewhere in Wales, I, really far out in a little remote place. 
um, Silverstone I went to multiple times, uh, Cadwell Park, um, uh, Brand Hatch was in my local so it took me an hour and a half to get to that, I would do so much driving, um, but I was just, and I would just sleep in the back of my car, I would really rough it, um, and, but I enjoyed it as well, um, and I was actually starting to make a bit of money from it as well, I started getting noticed, um, I think I also shot, so in six months I covered, so I was doing an event each weekend, um, sometimes I was doing two events in each in the weekend, and um, I was uh, I, I, at that point as well. I'd also reduced down how many photos I'd do, so I normally do about four thousand photos a weekend. Um, really limited down, so I was yeah. But I was also yeah. I had a lot of photos. I was saying I started getting into this groove of uh, because I when I was in uh, Australia taking those photos, I was just taking these stock photos basically, you know. People wanted this. I shot. I shot that. You know, I, I played it safe and I knew what to do. But um, yeah, in England, it just allowed me to get a bit more creative. And I was new to it, and I just wanted to see what I could do. And I um, was sort of inspired as well by other photographers there. It was just a completely different game, a completely different level of photography there versus in Australia, a small town with a couple of race tracks and small clubs. Um, versus uh, going to the Silverstone and you see that billion dollar thing called the wing and seeing how much money is invested and how much how how people take it seriously and tour and you know tour buses and and uh, the, the big trucks and everything it's just absolutely insane um, incredible experience and I'm so glad I done it and then when I came back to Australia it really set me apart my work had didn't my uh, quality of my work had really in, in, improved um, and I was getting noticed uh, but sadly um, that didn't last very long I didn't I so sales were good when I came back but then they they rapidly dropped off because I was supplying a small market um, you know there, there were a lot of regulars that were going back there so I was supplying a small market photos and um, yeah, I knew that I had to charge more and give less so that I would, you know, make sales again and the next time. And I, I didn't see, I didn't want to undervalue my work as well because I knew it was really, really good. I was high, I was probably, I was told I was actually one of the best motorsports photographers in Perth. Um, and I think probably today, I'm not sure if I've still got that badge. Um, but, you know, I, I think I'd be up for it, you know shoot a bit uh, again but um, it was just uh, a really good experience uh, doing it and then um, but when I came back it was just felt like I was doing a back step and I wasn't enjoying I was thinking about quitting and and I was sort of falling out of things because it wasn't run with how like it would be in the UK and I could see potential but it just wasn't that potential just wasn't coming here because you know you're just dealing with small clubs and uh, and they're set in their ways as well, um, and yeah, so in uh, August, I think on the 31st of or, no, 30th of August, um, 20, what was it, 2015? No, 2016 was my last day I shot motorsports uh, professionally, uh, because the next day on the 31st, I think it was the 31st or, yeah, 31st, is when I had an accident when I broke my back and that, that was a real game changer for me. Um, so today I still suffer and chronic pain from it, but um, that really spun a thing on me, and now I'm completely different, and I love what I do. I've gotten to, back into my landscapes, and you know, I create, I, I, I go to more places, I'm, I'm gutted that I, um, when I was in the UK, that I didn't, you know, shoot more, you know, get out there and take photos and, um, and you know, visit the landscapes because it was amazing out there. And um, yeah, I I did live in Eastbourne. I went down to the beach and went down to the Beachy Head and stuff and took photos there and and Berlin Gap. Uh, when you could get down to the beach, I think you can't get onto the beach now anymore. Um, and yeah, so I'm <laughs> gutted I didn't do it. But, you know, I did go out there every now and then and I took a, like a little uh, compact camera out there. But 
when I was shooting in the UK, I um, also upgrade. I I made a, I had an insurance um, claim where I wrote off my uh, 1D Mark III, and what I got in the return was a 1DX. Um, so this was a beast, full frame, 14 frames a second. I know 14 frames per second doesn't sound like much today, but I think probably 16 frames a second is enough for any motorsport photographer because anything faster than that it just looks like video and I was even with this I was having to lower the frame rate at times uh, because it was just too fast too many photos were getting collected but I was taking um, I knew when to take my photos so uh, a bike I can say a bike on a turn came into frame my first shot I wouldn't use my second shot I would and my third shot was my another one I wouldn't use so that middle that that third that second shot was the one I kept uh, but now yeah I can um, do panning and get you know almost every single shot in focus and sh sharp and clear because I could just do it and I've also done a challenge where I used a Hasselblad system uh, to um, shoot motorsport so I used a, a H4D with 150mm lens I had a 50 100 so I was using the 50 to 110 mil lens. Then I uh, got a loner of a H6D with a 300 mil to uh, f4.5, I believe it is. So, and I just used. I went back to the old school methods of, you know, photography. So I, had, the focus was rubbish. So I had to pre-focus where I wanted to take the photo. Um, so I would focus on the ground. I get the aperture setting, and then I would watch the car. Uh, come into the. I want to do it with bikes again. So I want to do. I've done it with drifting, and I watch the car come into frame. I'm, lo, I'm seeing my uh, composite and my um, my focus where I lock focus on manually. So wait for the car to come round, and then shot. So I only have one frame. Um, but I would do panning uh, 50 of a second to a um, uh, 25th of a second. Um, and it was just, and seeing that detail of the medium format was just absolutely insane. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I don't think I'll. I don't know if I'll get back in the motorsport photography. I don't think I could. I had too much pain. I prefer my landscape photography. I can be on my own. Um, but it was just a chapter in my life um, that I'm glad I done. But I'm glad I'm out of because my goodness, it was so bad, so hard. My day consisted of the day before I would uh, pack up all my gear, clean my gear, get it already charged and make sure everything is working. So that would take a couple of hours. Then I'd set my alarm for 5 o'clock the next morning, wake up at 5, drive to the track. Get, um, so I had a house at 5.30, get to the track at, at about 7 o'clock, get the track, sign in, uh, talk to a few people and... Um, then uh, start putting cards on bikes and stuff. I have business cards, so I put cards on every single bike. Um, I would go with a premium quality car business card, so it wasn't cheap. But the you know I didn't want to have a cheap uh, look um, showing off what I do. So um, yeah, qu quality mattered, and it still does. And um, so I put that on there on there bikes so I start shoot and then they start going on at the track at eight. I'd be shooting all day up until about four thirty. Um and then I'd finish, go drive home, uh offload the photos onto the computer, cook something, uh to have something to dinner dinner while the photos are offloading onto the computer. Uh have a shower and then when the photos get onto the computer it normally take about three hours because I was shooting raw. Um, and I'd have about 160 gigabytes of photos to go through um, and because everyone wanted the photos done ASAP I had to you know get, get onto it so I would spend uh, two days without any sleep sitting in front of the computer edit sorting through the photos editing the photos uploading the photos and then um, I'd get very few sales or I'd get people screenshotting off my website and um, it would just annoy me and then get people tagging me on their photos saying, no, thank you for the photos, great job Simon, and I'll go, hang on, I haven't had any sales from you, what the hell happened? So I'd go into the, because I had the notification and um, I'd see on their feed, it, uh, it was my water, I had a watermarked thing, I had a do not copy through it, it was kind of faint, you, but you could still see it, but people used it. Um, and I did tell people that there will be a time when I will not be here anymore, I will not be doing it, and they thought it was a bit of a threat, and it was in a way, um, but 
I'm no longer there, I'm not doing it, I don't have any of those photos anymore, anymore, I've just got a couple that I've kept that I wanted to hang on to, but I had over 300,000 photos that I'd taken, and all of those have gone. So I've probably got about maybe a thousand that I've kept uh, from the UK, and my last uh, couple of races I've done at Bob Gillow here in Australia. So yeah, that's it. Um, it's been a little long video, but I just wanted to share, and it's been it was a long, long experience, and it, I'm glad I've done it. But yeah, um, hopefully you found this enjoyable. Um, yeah, and it wasn't too bad to watch. Um, yeah, I so much has gone on, so I just wanted to include as much and tell my story as well. I'm going to head out, um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it interesting, be sure to hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. Um, also, if you'd like to see more videos in the future on my landscape photography and travel, make sure you subscribe. And if you've got any questions or you'd like to leave a comment, put it down in the comment section below. Anyway, I'm Simon, and I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye for now.